if you have more than one camera, shooting the same scene from two or more angles has a number of benefits. It can help you show your viewers exactly what you want them to see, help you hide jump cuts, make your edits more engaging, and much more. And Final Cut Pro makes it very easy to sync and edit multiple angles right in your timeline. Today, we'll take a look at how to film, organize, and edit multicam clips in Final Cut Pro. Before you start filming your scene, there's a few things you need to consider and plan out. The most important thing is make sure all your sources have audio. This audio will be used to precisely sync all your clips. So if possible, make sure you have audio recording turned on. It doesn't have to be good audio, so you can use your camera's internal mic. Just make sure it's recording. If you shoot more than one take, it can also be helpful to either say the take number at the start, or even write it on a piece of paper and hold it up in front of each camera to help you identify all the clips from the same take. And this goes without saying, but make sure all your cameras are recording at the same time. You don't have to start recording on all at the exact same time. Just make sure when your scene starts, all the cameras are rolling. For my example, I have a few takes of a product unboxing video shot using three cameras and an audio recorder. I have my main camera, one camera off to the side, an overhead cam for which I just use my iPhone, and a shotgun mic connected to an audio recorder for my good audio. So four sources for this one take. Before you sync all your clips and start editing, I find it very helpful to organize and label your clips. You don't need to do this step, but this can save quite a bit of time later on in your project. What I like to do is rename all my clips and use the angle description and the take number as the name of the clip. After importing into Final Cut Pro, I also like to assign an angle number and the name of the camera to each clip. For this, command click all your clips from your main camera, open the inspector window, and at the bottom, where it says basic, open the drop down menu, it changes to extended. Since this is my main angle, I'll assign angle one to all these clips and the camera they were shot on. Repeat this step for each individual angle. We're now ready to sync all our clips, and Final Cut Pro makes this very simple to do. Command click on all the angles from take one, right click on any of the selected clips, and select new multicam clip. In the pop-up window, make sure this Use Audio for Synchronization checkbox is selected and click OK. Final Cut Pro will synchronize all your selected clips and combine them all into one multicam clip, marked with this multicam icon in the top left corner. And even though it looks just like one clip, if you double click it to open it in your timeline, you can see all four of your selected clips are inside this multicam clip, kind of like a compound clip. Let's add this clip to our project and take a look at how to edit a multicam clip. But before we do, I just want to take a few seconds to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Whether you need some extra B-roll to spice up your edit, a perfect song for a killer soundtrack to your project, or a unique title or effect that's missing from Final Cut Pro, chances are you'll find it on Envato Elements. For one low monthly price, you get access to over 7 million digital assets to use in your project. And with unlimited downloads and one simple commercial license, you never have to worry about copyright strikes. If you make videos, you need to check out Envato Elements. Trust me, you won't regret it. To see all your available angles, from the menu bar select View, Show in Viewer, and Angles, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command 7. I also usually close the media browser just to give myself a bit more space. From the settings drop down menu, you can choose the number of angles to display in this window, overlay time code over each clip, or rather to display the angle number, clip name, or neither. Over on the left side, you have the switching icons. Every time you switch to a different angle, you can switch both your video and your audio, video only, or audio only. Most of the time, you want your audio to be consistent throughout the project, so you normally pick your audio source and only switch video angles. So move your playhead to the start of your clip, select audio switching, and choose your audio source. Next, select video only switching, and choose your starting angle. Down in your timeline, you can edit this multicam clip just like a normal clip, except there's one difference, and we'll talk about it in a bit here. For now, let's trim off all the extra start from the start of the clip, and take a look at how to switch from one camera angle to another one. Move your playhead to where you want to switch angles, and in the viewer, select the angle you want to switch to. Final Cut Pro blades your clip and switches the clip after the cut to your selected angle. 
Another way to switch angles is by manually blading your clip. With a skimmer over the frame you want to switch angles, blade your clip, right click it, and choose the active video or audio angle. The third, and probably the easiest way to switch between angles, is by using keyboard shortcuts. Each angle number is assigned to the same number on your keyboard. So to switch back to angle one, just press one on your keyboard and your clip cuts to that angle wherever your skimmer is. You can do this in real time by playing your clip and just using keyboard shortcuts to switch angles as your clip plays back. To fine tune exactly where the cut takes place, hover over any of the cuts and your cursor changes to a slip trim icon. Click and drag to position this cut exactly where you need it. Or if you switch angles by mistake, just select the cut and press delete to remove it. But because you can slip trim exactly where your cut takes place, if you need to trim off a part of a clip, you can't ripple trim these clips by dragging one of the end handles. If you need to cut out a part of your clip, you either have to blade it and delete it, or use the option left or option right bracket shortcut keys. That's the only real difference between editing a normal clip and a multi-count clip in your timeline. One last thing I did want to mention about editing multi-count clips is having quite a few streams of compressed video in the same clip. Trying to play it back and edit at the same time can slow down your machine quite a bit. To help with this, by default, Final Cut Pro is set to transcode your multi-count clips to optimized media. This helps with the editing part, but can take up quite a bit of drive space. To turn this default setting off, go to the Preferences window, select Playback Settings, and uncheck this box right here. This will save you hard drive space, but can make your machine struggle quite a bit, especially if you have lots of angles. It's a bit of a trade-off between performance and storage space. So that's the basics of multicam editing in Final Cut Pro. Fairly straightforward, it's so much easier than trying to layer each angle on top of each other and try and keep them all in sync. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily duck audio in Final Cut Pro. And yes, I said duck audio, not f audio. What this means is turning down the volume of a specific part of your clip. The most common use for this is turning down the volume for your background music when there's dialogue in your video. But this can also be used to remove annoying mouth noises and even lowering the volume of your breath to make it less prominent. Let's jump into Final Cut Pro and get started. In this first example, we'll look at how to manually turn down the volume. So we got a nice music track playing in the background, but when I start to speak, the music overpowers my voice, making it very hard to hear. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and this is Turbo Studio. So we're going to turn down the volume of the music track to make the dialogue more prominent, then turn it back up when I'm done talking. First, switch your timeline view to audio waveforms to help better identify when the dialogue comes in. Select your music track, hold down the option key, and click on the volume line to add an audio keyframe. Go back about 10 to 20 frames, hold down the option key, and add another audio keyframe. Add two more keyframes when your dialogue ends and you want your music track to go back to the original volume. Now, click and drag in the volume line between the middle two keyframes to adjust the volume of just that part of the track. You can also drag the outside keyframes either in or out to make your volume change more or less gradual. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and this is the Turbox Neo Elite Controller. Let's take a look at an easier way of doing this and use a range tool to turn down the volume of my breath in this next clip. Controller from the Locate the part of your clip you want to adjust in your timeline and switch to the range selection tool by pressing R on your keyboard. Click and drag out a range in your timeline where you want to adjust the volume. With the range of your clip selected, click on the volume line and drag it up or down to adjust the volume. As soon as you change the volume in your clip, Final Cut Pro automatically adds the four necessary keyframes and leaves the volume outside the selected range at the original levels. Just like before, you can drag these keyframes either in or out to feather out the volume change. Controller from this. And last, let's take a look at my preferred way of ducking audio in Final Cut Pro. But before we do, I want to take a minute to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Do you need quality royalty free music for a video? Envato Elements has over 100,000 royalty free audio tracks and over 500,000 sound effects to choose from. Need stock footage? How about over 2 million clips to choose from? 
Bravado Elements also includes video templates, graphic templates, still images, fonts, and so much more. And the best part is everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly price. You get unlimited downloads and with one simple license for all your products, you never have to worry about copyright strikes. I've been using Envato Elements for a long time and trust me, it's worth every penny. Now back to Final Cut Pro. Whenever I need to dock audio in one of my projects, the way I prefer to do it is by using keyboard shortcuts. I find this to be the easiest and the fastest way to adjust volume. Let's take a look at how to use keyboard shortcuts to remove this mouth noise from my next clip. Now, locate the waveform of the noise you want to remove, zoom in on your timeline to be more precise, move your skimmer to the start of the waveform, and press I on your keyboard to set the end point. Move your skimmer to the end of the waveform, and press O to set the out point. With the range selected in your timeline, use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl and minus key to lower the volume. This is good if you just need to lower the volume, but in my case, I want to bring it all the way down. For this, Final Cut Pro has a silence command, but it's not assigned to a keyboard shortcut. What you need to do is add your own keyboard shortcut for this command. From the menu bar, select Final Cut Pro, Commands, and Customize. To add custom keyboard shortcuts, you first have to make the copy of the default command set. In the top left corner, from the drop down menu, select Duplicate and give this command set a name. Now in the top right corner, search for silence, select it in the commands window, and press a single key or a combination of keys to assign a keyboard shortcut to this command. Personally, I have this set to the S key, but you can choose whatever keyboard shortcut you want for it. Save your command set, and close the shortcuts pop-up. Now to quickly silence a part of your clip, set the in point with I, out point with O, and S to silence a selected range. Quick and very simple. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Not exactly sure what this effect is called, but I'm sure you've seen it on TikTok. It looks really cool and is actually fairly easy to do. Today, I'm going to show you how to film and edit this uh, outfit change trend. To film this, you can use a camera or you can even use your phone. The most important thing here is that it doesn't move, so I recommend setting it up on a tripod. Short clips like this are most popular on mobile platforms like TikTok, so I suggest shooting vertical. You also need a few outfits, or in my case, just a few different color sweaters. We're going to film this all in one take, so get everything ready ahead of time. Start your shot by walking into the frame with your next outfit in your hand and throwing it at the floor. Grab your next outfit, stand where you threw the first one down, and put it on. While still in the same spot, grab your next outfit, squat down, then stand up and throw it at the floor. Repeat this for every outfit you have, and on the last one, stand up and walk out of the frame. That's all you really need for filming. Next, we're going to cut out all the parts in between and polish our edit. I'm going to be doing this using Final Cut Pro, but you can do the exact same thing using iMovie or any other editing software you might have. Find the spot where you first walk into the frame and trim off everything before it. Next, move to the frame where the sweater hits the ground and make a cut there. Skip over all the parts where you change and find the frame where you have your next outfit on and are about to stand up. Make a cut there and delete everything in between. So you should go from your outfit just hitting the ground to you wearing that outfit, standing up with your next outfit in your hands. Repeat this for every outfit. For trends like this one, music makes a huge difference. Find a music track you want to use and add it to your project. Mark the main beats in your song and retime your clips so the cuts line up with the beats in your music track. Keep in mind, Effects like this are meant to be fast, so pick a music track with a fast tempo, and honestly, if you can speed up your clips a bit, this effect will probably look much better. To sell this a little more, every time a piece of clothing hits the ground, I'm going to add a bit of camera shake. For this, I'm going to use an adjustment layer and the earthquake effect that comes with Final Cut Pro. Add the adjustment layer above your clips, stretch it out over your entire project, and in the effects browser, search for earthquake.
Add this effect to your adjustment layer. Place your playhead on the first cut. And go back four frames. In the inspector, bring the earthquake effect amount slider down to zero and add a keyframe. Move ahead one frame, and bring the amount up to about 20. Move ahead three more frames until your playhead is on the cut and add another keyframe with the amount at around 20. Move 10 frames ahead and bring the amount down to zero. Repeat this step for every cut. So four frames before the cut with the amount at zero, add a keyframe. Move one frame ahead and set the amount to about 20. Another keyframe at the cut, move ahead 10 frames and bring the amount back down to zero. Do the same for the rest of your cuts. Once you're done, the end result should look something like this. Now you can post this on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, or wherever you post your content. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And if you're new here, I make videos like this one every week, so please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. I've been watching quite a bit of TikTok lately, and as far as editing goes, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. One person I really enjoy watching is Happy Kelly. She posts a lot of really cool dance clips, but what makes her stand out is she usually adds some really neat effects in post. Inspired by this, I wanted to see if I could replicate the popular locked on stabilizer effect in Final Cut Pro, but without any third party plugins. I'm also a horrible dancer, so I'm just gonna use stock video for this. Here's how you can do this effect in Final Cut Pro. First thing we need to do is track our clip. More specifically, we need to track our subject's head. You could just manually add a tracker, but I found that using a face tracker sometimes gets you a better track. You can't manually select a face tracker, so you kind of have to trick Final Cut Pro by tracking an effect. What I used for this was a color board effect because without any adjustments, it doesn't change your clip. So set your playhead where the subject's face is sharp and unobstructed, grab the color board effect, drag it over the viewer window and over your subject's face. Click the analyze button to track your clip. We now need to take the tracking data and apply it to the position parameters of our clip. Cody Warner, I'm sure you've heard of him, figured out a great way to do this. What you need to do is flip your clip on both the X and the Y axes, take the tracking data from it, apply it to another copy of the same clip and flip it again. Let me show you. Select your clip and in the inspector window, set the scale all value to negative 100. Grab the same clip from your media browser and place it above your original clip. Select the transform tool and from the drop down menu, select the face track you did earlier. This adds all our tracking data from before to our top clip, but if you skim through it, you can see it's kind of a mess, so we have to clean it up. First, in the inspector window, click on the tracking square beside the transform parameter and disable rotation. If your rotation value is anything other than zero, select it and change it back to zero. Next, to flip this image back, just like before, change the scale all value to negative 100. If you skim through the clip, the part of your subject you track remains in the same spot and the rest of the image moves around, leaving black edges in your frame. Go through your clip and adjust the scale and position parameters until you eliminate all the black parts. Keep in mind, because this clip is flipped, all your controls would be backwards. This is our original clip and the same clip with the effect applied. Let's take a look at one more example, but this time use a clip that's a bit harder to track. If I skim through it, you can see the dancer waves her hand in front of her face. Since her hand obstructs the part we want to track, this will probably mess it up. In cases like this, tracking manually will probably work better. Move your playhead to a frame where the part you want to track is sharp and unobstructed. And in the video inspector, scroll all the way down to trackers. Click the plus button and add the tracking square over the part you want to track. Make this nice and small. Back in the inspector, for analysis method, select machine learning. What this does is instead of just tracking specific pixels, Final Cut Pro uses machine learning to learn what you're tracking and predict the movement. This method, while a bit less accurate, should give us a better track in this case. Click analyze to track your clip. Just like before, flip your original clip and add the same clip above it. 
select the Transform tool, and add the tracking data from the bottom clip. Flip your image, and resize and reposition it to fill your frame. Here's the clip we started with, and the same clip with the locked on effect. I'm not sure how Cody figured out this hack, but he did, and it works awesome. I'll link his video down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Jump cuts. We've always been told jump cuts are bad and do whatever you can to stay away from them. And if you're making a feature film, that's very true. But if you're making a video you just want to show your family and friends, or even post online, are jump cuts really that bad? I mean, go watch any good vlog on YouTube. It's probably full of jump cuts. And they're not even that noticeable. Until you try adding a jump cut to one of your videos and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Is it just because it's your video and you notice it more? Or is there a trick to add in jump cuts? Well, it turns out there is a trick to add in jump cuts to your project, and this one tiny step can make a huge difference. Over the last few weeks, I've been taking Casey Neistat's filmmaking course on monthly.com. I'm learning a ton about telling a great story, which I need a lot of help with, but I'm also picking up a few editing tips as I watch Casey edit his movie. To make his jump cuts a little less noticeable, what Casey does is blend the audio from his two clips together and it actually makes a huge difference. Let me show you. I have two clips in my timeline with a pretty noticeable jump cut. Recently, side. Recently. Now, because I moved throughout this take, there's no way to make this look like one continuous shot, but we don't have to. All we need to do is draw the audience's attention away from the cut just so it's not so noticeable. One way to do this, the method I learned in Casey's course, is to use audio to hide the cut. And it's really simple. All you do is cut a few frames from the start of your second clip and drag them under the end of your first clip. Add a bit of a fade to both clips. And because you blended the audio from both these clips, the cut is quite a bit less noticeable. Outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course by... Here's a jump cut before. So I decided to do this outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course and the same cut after blending audio. I decided to do this outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course. The jump cut is still there, but much less noticeable. Not perfect, but it works. Well, on this topic, I want to talk about a few other ways you can hide jump cuts in your video. One awesome way to hide jump cuts is by using B-roll. For example, if I'm talking about using an iPhone to film yourself and I have a jump cut I need to hide, I can just take some footage of me using an iPhone and connect it above my timeline. But what if I'm talking about some like icebergs where I can't just run out and film some B-roll? Whenever I need quality B-roll for my videos, my first stop is always Envato Elements. Envato Elements has a library of over 2 million high quality stock video clips you can use in your next project. Just search for what you need, filter out your results by frame rate and video resolution, and license the clip to your project. It's that simple. While you're there, you can also get royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, custom fonts, and so much more. You get unlimited downloads of everything Envato Elements has to offer for one low monthly price. And with one simple license, you never have to worry about copyright claims. I've been using Envato Elements for a long time, and trust me, it's worth every penny. Try it out, you won't regret it. Now, back to the tutorial. If you film in a controlled environment like this and don't move much, there's a couple ways to almost completely hide jump cuts. One way is by switching camera angles, or if you're only using one camera, fake in another angle. Just take the clip after the cut and increase the scale of it by at least 30%. This makes it look like you just cut to another angle and is a perfect way to hide a jump cut. Cool stuff on there. One person I really enjoy watching the last method I want to talk about today is by using the flow transition. This doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it can completely hide your cut. I use this all the time when filming these videos. If the movement during your cut is minimal, go to your transitions browser, select the dissolves category, and add the flow transition to your cut. Final Cut Pro takes frames from both your clips and tries to seamlessly blend them together. What I find works best is ripple trimming this transition all the way down to three frames. Let your clips render out and your cut is completely gone. And predict the movement. This method. And predict the movement. This method. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it's pure magic. 
If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And if you're new here, I post videos like this every week, so please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and in today's video, I have seven tips for you to help you edit faster in Final Cut Pro. There's a lot of videos out there on how you can speed up the app itself, but today, I'm going to focus more on what you can do to edit more efficiently, therefore faster. We'll get into it right after a quick message from the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Whether you edit videos for a living or it's just a hobby, a subscription to Envato Elements could be a game changer. It's an all-in-one subscription service that gives you access to over 56 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, custom fonts, and so much more and new items are added every week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. We all know you can edit faster by learning and using keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna go a little deeper and talk about custom keyboard shortcuts. If there's something you do all the time, like blade in a clip for example, even if you already use the default keyboard shortcut command B, you can save quite a bit of time by making this a one key shortcut. Open the commands pop up in Final Cut Pro and select customize. You can't edit the default command set, so first thing you need to do is make a copy of it. Next, select the B key on the virtual keyboard and on the right hand side, you see all the assigned shortcuts. Pressing B with no modifier is assigned to select the blade tool. I hardly ever use this, so to me, it would make much more sense swapping these two around. I'll drag the blade tool command down here to one of these empty spots, drag up blade to no modifier, bring the blade tool up to the command modifier spot, and drag the duplicate off to the side to remove it. I'll also drag the blade all command to option B. Now, when I need to blade my clip, instead of having to press two keys, I only have to press one. This may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, it'll save you a lot of time. Tip number two is organizing your workspace. Depending on what stage of your project you're on, there are certain elements you need to see in your Final Cut window, and some are just a distraction. Using workspaces can really help with this. Final Cut Pro has three built-in workspaces. To switch between them, select Window and Workspace. Here you have the option of using the default workspace, one for organizing your media, and one for color and effects. You can also make your own space and save it to a custom preset. While we're on the topic of eliminating distractions, tip three is rejecting clips. If you have clips in your media browser you know you're not gonna use, but can't delete them, you can reject these clips and hide them from your media browser. For example, when I record my A-roll, I record my video and audio separately, then sync them after import. I know I'm not going to use these clips, but I can't delete them because I need them for my synced clip. What I can do is select these clips and press delete to reject them. Now if I select hide rejected from the view dropdown, all the clips I marked as rejected are gone, but they're not really gone, just hidden. The fourth tip I have for you today is placing your most used titles and effects into a separate category. This is especially useful if you download third party plugins with tons of presets. Select the title or effect you keep going back to, right click on it, and select Open in Motion. Next, from the menu bar, select File and Save As. Give it a name, and from the Category drop down, select New Category. Name this category, click Create, and publish it. Now, instead of scrolling through all your titles trying to find the one you want, you just select your most used category and your title is right there. Tip number five is the keyboard shortcut Shift Command V. What this does is paste the attributes from a copy clip. So if you have one clip and you added some effects to it or change it in any way and you need the same effects added to another clip, you just select the clip and press Command C to copy it. Now, if you select another clip and press Shift Command V, a paste attributes window pops up. Select the attributes you wanna to transfer to this clip and press paste to apply all these attributes to the selected clip. This can be a huge time saver. And while we're on this topic, if you have a certain effect or a set of effects 
like a color grade you apply to all your clips across multiple projects, or even libraries, you can save these as an effects preset. Select the clip that has the adjustments applied to it, and in the Video Inspector, at the bottom, click the Save Effects Preset button. Select the attributes you want to save in this preset, give it a name, select the category you want to save it in, and click the Save button. Next time you need to apply these same effects to a clip, just select it from the Effects Browser and drag and drop it onto your clip. Easy and can save you a ton of time. Last topic I want to talk about today is custom audio folders. If you have a library of royalty-free music and sound effects you use for your videos, you can have these readily available in your Final Cut Pro's audio sidebar. To add your music, select the folder with all your music and sound effects, right-click on it, and select Make Alias. Drag this folder out to your desktop. Next, press Shift-Command-C to open the computer window, select your system drive, Library, Audio, Apple Loops, Apple, and Final Cut Pro sound effects. Drag your folder shortcut into this location and remove alias from the name. Now, when you need to access your sound effects in Final Cut Pro, go into your audio sidebar, select Sound Effects, and pick your custom audio folder from the drop down menu. The nice thing about doing it this way instead of importing your folder into Final Cut Pro is if you download and add more tracks to this folder, they automatically show up in Final Cut Pro. I hope you found at least one of these tips helpful. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And a huge thank you to Envato Elements for making videos like this possible. If you're looking for a way to support my channel and get access to millions of digital assets, consider subscribing to Envato Elements. For every one of you that signs up, I get a small fee, so thank you for your support. I'll see you back here next week. If you edit on a laptop, especially one with a small internal drive, you probably use an external drive for a Final Cut Pro library. In this video, I'm going to show you a few steps you can take to edit your project on the go with everything on your internal drive without running out of space. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. The first thing I want to talk about today is making a mobile proxy only library. I have my library open in Final Cut Pro, and just for demo purposes, I kept this fairly small. This library is stored on my external drive, and all the media is stored inside the library. As you can see down here, I have about 2.6 gigabytes of media, and with all the render files and extras, this library is just over 28 gigabytes. To make a proxy only library, we first need to transcode all our files to proxy media. Select your event with your projects and media, right click on it, and select Transcode Media. In the pop-up window, select Proxy Media, H.264 codec, and 50% for frame size. This will give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to size versus quality. Click OK, and give Final Cut Pro a few minutes to transcode your media. Next, make a new library, and choose your internal drive as your storage location. I'll call mine FCPX Proxy to keep things clear. Select your event in your original library, Right click on it, copy event to library, and choose your proxy library. In the pop up window, include media, deselect your original media, and select only proxy media. Any media that doesn't support transcoding, like still images and audio files, will also be copied to this library. Click OK. If we select our proxy library, at first, it looks like most of our media is offline, except the still images and audio files. That's because the viewer is set to original media. If we select proxy only, everything is there. And if we look in the inspector, instead of having 2.6 gigabytes of media, we're down to just over 200 megabytes. You can now edit your project on your laptop, only needing to connect your external drive with the original media for final export. Once you are ready to export your project, connect your external drive and open up the original library. Select the finished project in your proxy library and click File copy project to library, and pick your original library. Since all your media is already in that library, select Project Without Media and click OK. Switch your viewer to Original Media to make sure all your media is online. Your project is ready for full quality export. 
Next, I want to talk about render files and selective rendering. For this, let's go back to our proxy library. If we look in the inspector, we only have about 200 megabytes of media, but our library size is over 5 gigabytes. This is because of all the render files. By default, Final Cut Pro renders your media in the background. It makes render files, which are easier to edit. Most of the time, these are not necessary. To turn off background rendering, open the Preferences window, and in the Playback tab, deselect Background Render. Next, close the Preferences window, select your library in the Media Browser, and from the menu bar select File, and Delete Generated Library Files. In the pop-up window, select Delete Render Files, and All. Our library just went from 5 gigabytes to just over 300 megabytes, more than 10 times smaller. One thing to keep in mind though, is with background rendering turned off, you might get choppy playback or drop frames, especially on clips with lots of effects applied to them. If this is bad enough to affect your workflow, you can selectively render specific clips in your timeline for smoother playback. Select one or more clips in your timeline, and from the menu bar select Modify, and Render Selection. I call this selective rendering, and doing it this way can save you quite a bit of space on your drive. The last thing I want to talk about today doesn't really have anything to do with Final Cut Pro. This is more about keeping your hard drive tidy and clean to maximize the amount of space you have. The tool I use for this and have been for a long time is Clean My Mac from MacPaw. This app scans your hard drive, finds all the unneeded files like outdated cache files, broken downloads, logs, and all sorts of clutter and deletes it all for you with just one click. It also comes with an awesome uninstaller tool that helps you completely remove unused apps and all the files that come with them. Honestly, you'd be amazed at how much space all this unneeded junk can take up on your hard drive and Clean My Mac can help you easily find it and safely delete it. MacPaw isn't sponsoring this video, this is just a tool I think every Mac owner needs to have. And before I go, I do want to take a minute to talk about MacPaw. Many of you probably don't know this, but MacPaw, the developer behind Clean My Mac, Setup, ClearVPN, and more amazing apps, is based out of Kiev, Ukraine. As of the time I'm recording this video, Ukraine is being invaded by this wannabe dictator. The MacPaw team was prepared for this, so as far as their software goes, it's business as usual. But in Ukraine, innocent people are dying, their homes are being destroyed, and families are torn apart by this unprovoked war. This needs to stop. The team at MacPaw is doing everything in their power to help raise awareness of these horrible events, including free access to clear VPN for all residents of Ukraine to help them stay in touch with their friends and families, free copies of Clean My Mac for any news reporters covering this war, and much more. I've had the pleasure of collaborating with MacPaw in the past, so when all this started, I reached out to my friends over there to see how I could help. Besides raising awareness of this devastating attack, I'll include a few links in the video description where people from anywhere in the world can go to help out. Also, the link to clean my Mac in my video description is an affiliate link. Any money I make from this, I will personally donate to this cause. Have a look at the links in the video description, and if you can, please help out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. In this special episode, I brought in a secret guest, and we're going to share with you four Final Cut Pro tips Apple doesn't want you to know. Okay, so Apple isn't hiding anything from you, but we do have four lesser known Final Cut Pro tips you may not know about. And the secret guest I brought in is none other than the super talented cinematographer Dylan John. I'm sure you all know who Dylan is, but just in case you don't, Dylan also has a YouTube channel with a ton of awesome Final Cut Pro tutorials. I'll link his channel in the video description below. Go subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for joining me, Dylan. Thank you so much for having me on your channel again, Serge. I am stoked to be here and I am stoked to share this first tip, which will hopefully blow your socks off. Okay, that was lame, I know, and I'm sorry. This first tip will allow you to edit faster and it'll make sure that you use all the best clips and best parts of clips in your edit. Chances are that you already know that if you select a clip or a part of a clip in your library and press F on your keyboard, you'll favorite that media. This comes in handy because not only can we see which media we like just by noticing this green bar over the media, but we can also go to this drop-down menu, select favorites, 
and now we have our full list of the best clips. But what happens when we start using a bunch of these favorite clips in our edit and we're struggling to find what parts we have not used? Yes, we can go into view, browser, and hit used media ranges which will show us what clips or parts of clips we've used by way of an orange bar here. But even that doesn't mitigate how frustrating it can be to have to scroll through all the media, some in different events maybe, just to find the unused parts of clips that we like the most. Check this out though. Go to File, New, and hit Library Smart Collection. You can also press the shortcut Option, Command, and N. From here, I'll rename this Unused Favorites. Double click the gear icon, which will allow us to bring in and exclude media that fits or doesn't fit certain parameters. Hit the plus sign, ratings, and now all of our favorite clips or segments of clips are added to this smart collection. Hit the plus sign again, hit used media, and switch this to unused. Now if we click off and come back in, you'll notice that you have a dedicated smart collection with all the media you love and have not been used in the project. Even if the media is only a little part of the original clip, just that part will show up. And even if the media is spread amongst different events, it'll show up in this one smart collection. Quick and easy access to help you edit faster and prevent a lot of hair pulling. Tip number two is modifying Final Cut Pro's built-in transitions. For example, if you had a default cross-dissolve transition, which by the way, you can do with a keyboard shortcut command T, it's pretty boring. What many people don't know is you can actually modify the look of this and many other transitions. Select the transition clip in your timeline and head up to the inspector window. For this particular transition, you have 12 different looks you can choose from. So if you select shadows, the darker parts of your second clip come in first, followed by highlights. We just took our boring old cross dissolve transition and turned it into a much more trendy luma fade. Next time you add a transition to your project, have a look in the video inspector and see how you can turn a boring old transition into something much cooler. Tip number three is probably one of the single greatest modifications that I've done to Final Cut Pro to help me edit faster. It's putting your sound effects directly into Final Cut so you can quickly access any sound you want and the big plus is that you can see the audio waveform, you can quickly play out the sound, scrub, and select the section of the sound effect that you want which is something you can't do if your sound effects are in a folder outside of Final Cut. You'd have to bring it into FCP first. So here's how you set this up. Go to whatever folder you're using that has all of your sound effects, and if all of your sounds are spread out and not in one place, I'd recommend that you create a new folder and put all of them in there. Then right-click that folder and hit Make Alias. This is gonna create a mirrored shortcut folder for this main folder. If that confuses you, what this means is that whenever we put new sound effects into this original folder, it'll be transferred to this alias folder as well. Now let's place this alias folder in the right spot. Copy the alias folder by pressing Command C or copy by right clicking and pressing here. Then you can delete this. Head into your computer's hard drive, which usually you can access by going to Go, Computer, Hit your hard drive, which is usually Macintosh or Macintosh HD, then Library, hit Audio, go to Apple Loops, Apple, Final Cut Pro Sound Effects, and here we can see all the Final Cut Pro sound effect folders that you can normally see within the software. All we're gonna do is press Command V to paste that alias folder. I'll take off this timestamp so it looks good in Final Cut. And if you head into Final Cut, you'll see that we have our sound effects folder and all of the folders within our sound effects library. And anytime you want to add more sound effects, just find the original folder and drop these sound effects in. No need to go through that deep file system that we just went into. Hell yeah! The last tip I have for you today is a three finger drag. And I have to thank Matthew O'Brien for showing me this one. It's been a game changer. If you use a trackpad with Final Cut Pro, this tip can save you a ton of time and greatly improve your workflow. Until I learned how to do this trick, to move a clip in Final Cut Pro or move any file on your Mac, I had to click and hold down the trackpad with my index finger on one hand and use my other index finger to drag my clip or file. There's a much better way to do the simple step, but first, you have to turn this feature on. Go into your system preferences, select accessibility, pointer control, then trackpad options. In here, enable dragging, and from the drop down menu, select three finger drag. Now, in Final Cut Pro, when you need to move a clip, instead of using both hands, just place your cursor over the clip you need to move, 
place three fingers down on your trackpad and drag them to move your clip. Even if you run out of space on your trackpad, just move your fingers over and keep on dragging. This can also be used to drag any file or window on your Mac. Try this out, and I promise you'll never go back to using two hands. I hope you found at least one of these tips helpful. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And a huge thank you to Dylan for joining me today. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out Dylan's channel. He has a ton of amazing Final Cut Pro tutorials and other filmmaking tips. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. In today's video, we'll take a look at how to highlight text and bring your boring old screenshots to life with a camera flyover effect. All this can be done right in Final Cut Pro without the need to download or install any plugins. Before we jump into Final Cut Pro, I just want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Whether you edit videos for a living or it's just a hobby, a subscription to Envato Elements could be a game changer. It's an all-in-one subscription service that gives you access to over 56 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, custom fonts, and so much more. And new items are added every week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description to see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. First, let's take a look at how to draw attention to a specific part of your screenshot by highlighting text. Grab your screenshot clip and drag it down into your timeline. Next, open the Titles and Generators browser, expand the Generators drop-down menu, and select the Solids category. Grab the Custom Generator clip, drag it down into your timeline, and place it above your screenshot clip. Ripple trim it to the same length as your bottom clip. Press Command 4 to open the Inspector window, and select the Generators Inspector. First thing we want to do is change the color of this generator to the color we want to use for the highlighter. Click on the color square and select the color of your highlighter. I'll use lemon for this demo. To make the text underneath visible, select the Video Inspector and change the Blend Mode to Darken. Next, let's select the text we want to highlight. Press Command 5 to open the Effects Browser and in the search bar at the bottom, search for the Crop and Feather effect. Grab this effect and apply it to your generator clip. In the video inspector, use the height and width sliders to adjust the size of your highlighted area and position controls to place it over the text you want to highlight. You might have to zoom in on the viewer window to more precisely adjust the size and placement of this effect. If you find the adjustment sliders are a bit too sensitive for this, you can always click on the number beside the slider and manually enter a value. After you get your highlighted area exactly where you need it, use a feather slider to feather out the edges and make this look a little more realistic. To animate this highlighter effect, zoom out on your viewer window and place your playhead on the frame you want this effect to start on. From the Transform drop-down under the viewer window, select Crop and click the Trim tool. Grab the handle on the right side of the trim frame and drag it over to the left until it's just to the left side of the effect. Add a keyframe here. Move your playhead ahead about 20 frames and drag the crop handle to the right until your full highlighter effect is revealed. Click Done. Here's what we have so far. Next, let's animate this screenshot with a camera flyover effect to make this look even better. First, command click both your clips and use a keyboard shortcut Option G to make them into a compound clip. With a compound clip selected, from the Transform dropdown, select the Distort tool. Zoom out on your viewer window and use the corner handles to add a bit of perspective to your image. If you want this to be symmetrical, in the inspector window, manually adjust the similar values so they're exactly the same. Click Done. Move your playhead to where you want the animation to start, select the Transform tool, and use either the on-screen controls or the sliders in the inspector window to set your starting camera position. Add a keyframe here. Move your playhead to where you want the animation to end and set your end camera position. Right click on each control point in the viewer window and change the movement type from smooth to linear. Click done. And last, to make this even more realistic, let's add some depth of focus blur. Select your clip in the timeline and make another compound clip. Go back to the effects browser, select the blurs category, 
and add the focus blur effect to your clip. With your playhead at the start of your clip, in the inspector, drag the height slider all the way up to 100, and depending on the amount of distortion in your screenshot, adjust the width slider until the blur looks realistic. To make this more subtle, I recommend bringing the amount down to about 15 or 20. Using on-screen controls to move the center point to an area of your clip you want to be in focus at the start. Make sure this is on the close side of your frame. Add keyframes to all your focus parameters. Next. Move your playhead to the end of your clip and move and adjust the focus point until your highlighted text is completely in focus. Here's the shot we started with and our finished result. And this was all done in Final Cut Pro without any plugins. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next week. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you four ways you can use the luminance levels in your video clips to create four different luma fade transitions. The first couple of methods are nice and simple, actually using the cross dissolve transition built right into Final Cut Pro. First, to demonstrate this, let me show you this transition on two gradient clips. First one with white on top and black on the bottom, and the second clip with black on top and white on the bottom. When you add a cross dissolve transition to your clips, the dissolve is linear, with the first clip fading out and the next clip fading in all at the same time. Now, if we select the transition clip in the timeline, up in the inspector window, we can modify the look of this cross dissolve. For the first method, from the look menu, select shadows. What this does is replaces the highlights in our first clip with the shadows from the second clip first, then replaces the shadows from the first clip with the highlights from the second clip. Let's try this out on two video clips. Add the cross dissolve transition, select it in the timeline, and in the inspector window, change the look to shadows. I'll also ripple trim this transition clip out a bit to highlight the effect. This is the original transition, and the same two clips with the shadows cross dissolve. Method 2 is very similar, except this time we'll change the look to highlights. This does the exact opposite of the last look, replacing the shadows first, then the highlights. Let's apply this to our next two video clips, change the look to highlights, and stretch it out to make it last a bit longer. Once again, here's a default cross dissolve, and the same two clips with the highlights cross dissolve transition. That was the easy way of achieving this effect, but not really a true luma fade. For the next two methods, we'll use the actual luma keyer, and as you'll see, the results will speak for themselves. But before we do, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Whether you edit videos for a living, or it's just a hobby, a subscription to Envato Elements could be a game changer. It's an all-in-one subscription service that gives you access to over 56 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, custom fonts, and so much more. And new items are added every week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. Now, back to Final Cut Pro. Place your playhead between your two clips and go back one or two seconds. Press Command B to blade your clip and drag it straight up to place it above the timeline over the start of your second clip. Press Command 5 to open the effects browser and from the key in category, select the Luma keyer. Drag and drop this effect over your top clip. With your playhead at the start of this clip in the inspector, drag the top Luma slider all the way to the left. Add a keyframe here. Press the down arrow to go to the end of this clip and the back arrow key to go back one frame. Drag both the top and bottom Luma sliders all the way to the left. Your top clip should be completely transparent. What this does is fade out your highlights in your top clip first, followed by mid-tones and shadows for this cool Luma fade effect. And for our last example, instead of fading out our first clip, we'll use the Luma gear to fade in our second clip. Place your playhead between your two clips and bring it back about 1-2 to two seconds. Grab your second clip and snap it to the playhead above your timeline. Move your playhead to the end of your first clip 
and with the top clip selected, press Command B to blade it. Drag the second part of this clip down into your timeline and delete the gap clip. Move the playhead to the start of your top clip, select it, and add the Luma Keyer effect. With your playhead at the start of this clip, drag the bottom slider all the way to the right and add a keyframe. Down arrow to move to the end of this clip and back arrow to go back one frame. Grab the top slider and use it to move both control points all the way back to the left. The highlights in your top clip will fade in first, followed by mid-tones and shadows for this cool effect. You can also do this the opposite way and fade in your shadows first, followed by mid-tones and highlights. Let's select our top clip and reset our Luma slider parameter. Move your playhead to the start of this clip and before making any adjustments, select the invert checkbox. Grab your bottom slider and drag it all the way to the left to reveal your bottom clip. Add a keyframe. Move your playhead to the end of this clip and back one frame and drag both the bottom and the top sliders back to the right. This makes your shadows fade in first, followed by mid-tones and highlights for this cool effect. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next week. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to learn to add the hologram effect you just seen. Let's jump right into Final Cut Pro and get started. Before you start, you'll need a couple shots for this effect. First, you need a screen recording of your phone screen where you interact with it and you'll need to film yourself interacting with the imaginary hologram screen. Try to match the motion of your screen recording as close as you can. Import both these clips into Final Cut Pro and add the clip of yourself interacting with the hologram to your timeline. Skim your clip and add a marker in the frame where you want your hologram to pop up. Continue skimming your clip and add a marker on every action. Move your playhead back to your first marker and connect your screen recording clip above your timeline. Go through this clip and add markers at the start of every movement in this clip. Next, let's retime this clip to line up with the actions in the bottom clip. First, I'll make the top clip into a connected storyline with the keyboard shortcut Option G, and to help see both clips a little better, use the X position parameter in the inspector to move the screen recording clip over to the right. To line up my first markers, I'll just add a whole frame at the start with Shift H and use the handle at the end to line up my markers. My next two markers line up already, so I'll just leave it. For the next one, I have a bit of a stutter towards the end of the scroll, so I'll just take this extra part right here, speed it up, and ripple trim the part after to line up my next two markers. I'll add another hold frame to line up the last swipe. Skim through your clip and make sure everything lines up. You might have to make a couple tweaks just so it looks right. Next thing we need to do is add some perspective to this clip and the add an animation at the start and at the end. Before we do, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. It doesn't matter if you edit videos for a living or it's just a hobby. A subscription to Envato Elements can take your videos from just being good to being amazing. It's an all-in-one subscription service that gives you access to over 59 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and much more. And new items are added every single week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. Now back to Final Cut Pro. Since Final Cut Pro doesn't have built-in 3D controls, we'll use a Distort tool to add perspective to our clip. First, command click all the clips in your connected storyline and combine them into a compound clip with Option G. With the compound clip selected, select the Crop tool and crop off the right and the left sides to the edges of the screen recording. 
if you want to. You can also crop off any unnecessary parts from the top and the bottom of your clip. Next, switch to the distort tool and use the corner handle to add perspective to your screen and place it in the frame. You might have to play around with this until it looks like it belongs in your frame. Click done. To make an intro animation, move your playhead to the start of your connected clip and use the right arrow key to move it ahead about 5 frames. Select the transform tool and add a keyframe. Move back to the start of this clip, set the scale to 10% and use the on-screen controls to move your clip. Right click on each control point and change the motion type to linear. Without moving your playhead, change the scale all slider to zero and deselect the transform tool. For the end animation, move your playhead to the last marker, select the transform tool and add a keyframe. Move your playhead ahead about five frames and use a combination of scale and the X position parameter to make the screen recording fly off screen. Once again, try and make this match your hand movement. Last thing we need to do is make your screen recording look like a hologram. First, bring the opacity of this clip down to about 50%. Next, select the color inspector and add a color wheels correction. Grab the global control pack and drag it all the way towards the edge on the teal or the blue side. I'm also going to bring up the overall exposure and saturation a bit. Next, press command 5 to open the effects browser and search for the glow effect. Add this to your top clip as well. Integrate this clip into your project and here's our finished result. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next week. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make your text stand out in your next project with five simple but very cool text effects, including video and text, neon glow effect, typewriter text and sound, underwater effect, and the always popular text reveal effect. Before we jump into Final Cut Pro, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. It doesn't matter if you edit videos for a living or it's just a hobby. The subscription to Envato Elements could take your videos from just being good to being amazing. It's an all-in-one subscription service that gives you access to over 59 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and much more. And new items are added every single week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. You can even try it free for 7 days, and if you don't love it, simply cancel it anytime during your free trial and you won't be charged a penny. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. The first effect we'll take a look at today is video and text effect. Select the video clip you want to place inside your text and add it to your timeline. With your playhead at the start of this clip, press Ctrl T to add the default title above your clip. Ripple trim this title clip to the same length as your video. With your title clip selected, double click on the text in the viewer window to select it and replace the default text with your own. In the inspector window, change the font to something heavy and use the size slider to make it nice and big. If you run out of room on the size slider, just click on the number beside it and drag up to make it even bigger. Deselect the title clip in your timeline, hover over the text in your viewer window until you see a text box, and click and drag the title to center it in your viewer window. Select the video inspector, and from the blend mode drop down menu, select stencil alpha. This places the video clip under your title inside the letters with a black background. For my example, to make it more visible, I'll add a custom generator clip above my text and change the color to white. To place this generator clip under your text in the video inspector, change the blend mode to behind for this video and text effect. Next, let's take a look at how to make a neon glow title. Once again, add a video clip you want to use to your timeline, move your playhead to the start of this clip 
and add a default title above it with Control T. Replace the default text and select your font. Outline fonts work best for this effect and the one I'm using today is the Nightlight font downloaded from Envato Elements. In the text inspector, change the face color to something bright. Press Command 5 to open the effects browser and from the text effects category, add the neon text effect to your title clip. If necessary, you can adjust the appearance of this effect in the video inspector. I'm pretty happy with how mine looks, so I'll just leave mine. Place this title in your frame and to make it fit in a little better, adjust the size and rotation of your text in the text inspector. If we play this clip back, you can see the camera moves, but the text stays in the same place. To make our text move with the camera, we need to track her bottom clip and apply the tracking data to her text. With your playhead at the start, select the bottom clip and at the bottom of the video inspector, click the plus button to add a tracker. Place a tracking square over the part of your frame that's in focus and has good contrast. Change the tracking method to point cloud and click the analyze button to track your clip. Select the title clip in your timeline, select the transform tool and from the drop down menu beside tracker, select the object track from your bottom clip. This applies the tracking data from your video clip to your title clip so the text moves with the camera. The third effect we'll take a look at today is the typewriter effect and for this one we'll use one of Final Cut Pro's built-in title presets. Go to your Titles and Generators browser and in the top right search for the typewriter effect. Add this title above your timeline. Replace the default text, make it bigger and if you want to change the font. Go to the Titles Inspector and use the Duration slider to adjust the typing speed. Now, to sell this effect even better, I'm going to add a typewriter sound effect which I also got from Envato Elements. All we need to do now is retime our title clip so the letters match up with the sound. You can't retime the title clip itself, so to get around this, select it and make it into a compound clip with a keyboard shortcut Option G. Go through this compound clip and add a marker whenever each letter pops on screen. Line up the first spike in your waveform with the first marker and use hold frames to stretch out the title clip to line up the rest. Here's our result. Effect number 4 is underwater text and this one is also very simple. Place your playhead where you want this text to come in and press Ctrl T to add the default title. Replace the text and adjust the title appearance. Go back to the effects browser and search for the underwater effect. Add this to your title clip and use the controls in the video inspector to adjust the appearance of this effect. And as always, I save the best for last. The text reveal effect is by far my favorite. To do this effect, you'll need a video clip with a person or an object that moves across a frame. Add a title above this clip, replace the text and adjust its appearance. Move your playhead to where the backside of your subject is about to cross the text and add a marker. Grab your video clip, hold down the option key and drag up to make a copy of it. Place it above your title clip. In the effects browser, from the masks category, add a draw mask to your top clip. With your playhead on the marker, add control points on the backside of your subject and a couple on the opposite side to close the mask. In the inspector window, add keyframes to the control points and transform parameters. Move ahead one or two frames and adjust the control points to follow your subject. Depending on the motion in your clip, you might be able to get away with skipping a few frames or if your clip is like mine, you have to adjust your control points on every frame. Keep going until your full title is revealed. Render out your clip for this cool text reveal effect. So what do you think? Which one of these was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next week. If you're a Final Cut Pro user, there's a good chance along with Final Cut Pro, you also own the two companion apps from Apple, Motion 5 and Compressor. And if you're like 99% of the users out there, you probably don't use these apps nearly enough. 
these two companion apps, especially Motion, are often overlooked, but could be an amazing tool to help you level up your Final Cut Pro projects. Today, I'm going to show you my three most frequent uses for Motion when editing in Final Cut Pro. Number one is making custom titles. Final Cut Pro comes with a ton of awesome built-in title presets, and there's almost unlimited possibilities with third-party plugins, but sometimes you just need something custom. Motion 5 is a great tool for this. Here's my workflow. When editing my project in Final Cut Pro, when I come to a point where I need a custom title, all I do is add the default title and enter the text I need. I don't worry about the details like font, color, or placement. All that's going to be done in Motion. All I'm worried about at this stage is where the title goes in my timeline and the text I want in it. This doesn't distract me from my edit and I can just keep going. Once I'm ready to form out my title, I head over to Motion and open a new title project. The length of this project doesn't matter, but I do take the time to make sure the frame rate and the video resolution are the same as my Final Cut Pro project. Here, I can adjust the appearance of my text, add background elements, and use one of the many built-in behaviors to animate my text or graphic elements. To keep this tutorial a reasonable length, I'll keep this example fairly simple, but you can do much more emotion than Final Cut Pro. Once I'm happy with my preset, I publish it to Final Cut Pro and save it in a custom category. Back in Final Cut Pro, to replace my default title, all I have to do is navigate to my custom preset in the Titles and Generators browser, grab my preset, drag and drop it over my default title, and choose Replace. Since I entered my text before, it automatically fills out the text in my custom preset with a font, color, and any other elements I built in Motion. My second most frequent use for Motion is modifying title presets. I have a ton of custom titles I downloaded from Envato Elements. When I add one of these to my timeline, I have to replace the default text and modify any of the available parameters. If I'm going to be using this preset in more than one project to save time, I use Motion to modify these presets. So when I drop it into my timeline, everything is already done for me. Select the title you want to modify in the Titles and Generators browser, right click on it, and select Open in Motion. Here, adjust the text, appearance, or any other animation in this title. Once you have it looking the way you want, choose File, Save As, give it a different name, and publish this preset to Final Cut Pro. You can now just drag and drop this preset into your timeline and all the adjustments you would have to make are already done. Before we move on to our last example, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. It's an all-in-one subscription service and a perfect place to get awesome title presets to use in your next project. But that's not all. A subscription to Envato Elements gives you access to over 59 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and much more. And new items are added every single week. You can try it for free for 7 days, and if you don't love it, simply cancel it anytime during a free trial and you won't be charged a penny. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. Now, back to Final Cut Pro. Even though Final Cut Pro has almost every tool you need, there are some things that are considerably better in motion. Take object tracking, for example. Final Cut Pro has an amazing object tracker built in, but for some things, like tracking a screen, it just falls a little short. Tracking a screen in motion will give you much better results. Let's try using motion to replace the screen in our next clip. First, we need to export this clip out of Final Cut Pro. Press R on your keyboard to switch to the Range tool, and click and drag out a range of this entire clip. Hit the Share button in the top right corner, and export the selected range as a master file. Open Motion, and in the bottom left, select Import as Project. Navigate to your exported clip, and click the Import button. Next, in Motion, import your clip you want to use as a replacement. With the replacement clip selected, add a motion tracking behavior and select Notch Move. Switch to four point corner tracking and adjust your clip to fit the screen. Click Analyze to track your clip. Export this clip as a movie file 
and import it back into Final Cut Pro. Use this new clip to replace your original clip in your timeline. I wish there was an easier way of doing this, but so far, this is the best I could come up with. There's a ton more you can do in motion, but these three tips is what I use the most. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on screen replacement using motion, let me know in the comments below, and I can do a full video on that topic. And if you want to learn more about motion, my friend Dylan Bates, aka the Final Cut Bro, has some amazing tutorials. I'll link his channel in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Today, we're going to learn how to track and replace the screen in your video using Final Cut Pro and Motion. First thing we need to do is export our clip from Final Cut Pro and import it into Motion. Unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing this. What you need to do is switch to the Range tool and click and drag out a range of your entire clip. Hit the Share button in the top right corner and export this range as a master file. Open up Motion, and in the bottom right, click the Import as Project button. Doing it this way automatically matches the length, frame rate, and the resolution of your project to your clip. Navigate to your exported clip and click Import as Project. Next, we need a placeholder for a screen replacement clip. You could just use a clip you want to replace your screen with, but in this example, we'll use a drop zone so when you're back in Final Cut Pro, you can easily switch it out. Click the Import button and select a dummy clip for this. Now, it doesn't really matter what it is. It could be a video clip or a still image. With your dummy clip selected, at the top of the Motion window, open up the Behaviors drop-down menu, select Motion Tracking and Match Move. Select the Inspector window, change the Tracking mode to Point Tracking, and select four corner tracking. In the viewer window, grab the top left point and drag it to the corner of your screen. Use the tracking preview and inspector for more precision. Repeat these steps for the other three corners. Click the analyze button to track your clip. Next, we need to convert a dummy clip to a drop zone. Make sure your dummy clip is selected. Go back to the inspector window and select the Image tab. From the Type drop-down menu, select Drop Zone. Click the down arrow on the far right of each of the parameters and select Publish. This will allow us to adjust all these parameters in Final Cut Pro. Now, to publish this to Final Cut Pro, we need to convert this motion project to a generator. Select the Project Level in the Layers window, go up to the menu bar and click File, Convert Project to, and select Generator. To publish this to Final Cut Pro, go back to the File menu and select Save As. Give it a name, choose a category to save it in, and click Publish. Go back to Final Cut Pro. Open your Titles and Generators browser, navigate to the category you saved your generator in, and select your tracked clip. Use this clip to replace your original clip. Now, here's the best part. Publishing the clip tracked inside the screen as a drop zone allows you to easily replace it. Select the generator clip in your timeline, go to the Generators Inspector, and click the Drop Zone button to select it. Back in your media browser, select the clip you want to place inside your screen, and click Apply Clip. Use the parameters you published earlier to adjust the framing of your clip. Let Final Cut Pro render it out, and you have a perfectly tracked screen replacement. If you enjoy these free tutorial videos, a great way to support this channel is by using YouTube's new Super Thanks feature. Any money you donate will be reinvested into the channel, helping me make better tutorials to help you make better videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Hi, my name is Serge, and today we're going to learn how to add text message animations to your project and use a built-in object tracker to track them to the movement in your clip. Let's jump into Final Cut Pro and get started. First thing we need to do is track the motion in our clip. With your playhead at the start of the clip, select it in your timeline, and head up to the Video Inspector. Scroll all the way down, 
and click the little plus button beside trackers. In the viewer window, select an area that's in focus and has a decent amount of contrast and place your tracker over it. Zoom in on your viewer window if necessary. For our example, I'm going to track the subject's fingernail on the back of her phone. To get the most precise track, back in the inspector, change your analysis method to point cloud. Click the analyze button to track your clip. Next, we need to add some text message bubbles. You could just use motion to make your own, but personally, to save time, anytime I need an asset I don't have, my first stop is usually in Vado Elements. There's a good chance I'll have what I'm looking for. I'll select video templates, narrow down my search to only templates compatible with Final Cut Pro and Motion, and search for text messages. This FCPX text messaging plugin by Shane York looks to be exactly what I'm looking for. I'll license it to my project, download it, and add it to my motion templates folder. Now, let's add these to our project in Final Cut Pro. Place your playhead where you want your first message to come in, go to the Titles and Generators browser, and find your new plugin. Our first one will be an incoming message, so let's select the text left preset and add it to our timeline. With this plugin, we can change the profile picture, adjust the color of the bubble and text, turn on and off animations at the start and end, and much more. Let's turn off the start animation for now, just so we can have it in the right place at the start. To change the text inside the message bubble, click on the text in the viewer window, select it in the text inspector, and replace it with your own. Notice how the text message bubble automatically changes size as you type. Nice little touch. Use the transform tool to position it in our frame. Turn the animation in back on. With the text bubble in place and looking the way we want, let's apply our tracking data from our clip. With the title preset selected and the transform tool still active, open the drop down menu beside trackers and add the object tracker from our bottom clip. In this case, all we want to track is the position of this title, so open the tracker drop down again and deselect rotation. In the video inspector, reset the rotation of this preset back to zero. If we play our clip back, you can see the text bubble moves perfectly with the phone. Next, let's add a response message. Place your playhead where you want the next message to pop in. Go to the Titles and Generators browser, and this time, let's add a text write preset. Deselect the animation and checkbox. Replace the text. And adjust the text bubble if necessary. Select the Transform tool and move the bubble to the same level as your original message, just off to the right. Add the tracking data from the original clip to this preset, deselect rotation, and reset the rotation value back to zero. Next, let's turn the in animation back on and move up the original message. With your playhead still at the start of this clip, select the bottom text preset and add a keyframe to the transform parameter. Use the right arrow key to move your playhead to the spot where the animation for a top clip bubble is complete. And in the video inspector, use the position Y parameter to move the bottom text bubble straight up. Here's what this looks like. Repeat the same steps to add more messages, making sure to keyframe and move up all the previous text bubbles. Once done, ripple trim the ends of each preset to the same length so everything animates out at the same time. Last thing we need to do is add some sound effects, and Envato Elements is a perfect place to find some. A subscription to Envato Elements includes almost 600,000 high-quality, royalty-free sound effects, but that's not all. For one low monthly price, you get access to over 59 million digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and so much more. And new items are added every single week. Everything Envato Elements has to offer is included for one low monthly fee. This is super helpful if you're trying to grow your business or your YouTube channel and don't have an unlimited budget. Click the link in the video description and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. For this video, I downloaded the 50 Short Notification Alerts Volume 1 pack and a phone typing sound effect. Let's add these to our project, add some background music, and here's our finished result.
If you enjoyed this video, help me out by sharing it with someone else who might like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Final Cut Pro is great, but it's not perfect. One major issue in Final Cut Pro is animating keyframes. The tools included for it suck, and in this video, we're going to fix that. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. First, let's take a look at Final Cut Pro's keyframing problem. This is most apparent when keyframing the transform tool. Let's use it to animate a zoom in effect on our clip. Place your playhead where you want the zoom effect to start, select the transform tool, and add a keyframe. Move a few frames ahead, and use the transform tool to resize and reposition your clip. Doing it this way gets the job done, but honestly, it looks like crap. There's a much better way of doing this effect, but you do need a plugin. The plugin I'm talking about is called Add Motion from FX Factory. This video isn't sponsored. I didn't even get this plugin for free, but it's by far my favorite plugin for Final Cut Pro and probably the one I use the most. To add a zoom effect to your clip using Add Motion, go to your Titles and Generators browser and select the Add Motion category. With your playhead where you want the effect to start, select the Adjustment layer and add it above your timeline. Press Command 5 to open the Effects Browser, select the Add Motion category, and add the Add Motion effect to your Adjustment Layer. Move your playhead a couple seconds into the clip, and with the Adjustment Layer selected, head up to the Video Inspector. First thing we need to do is zero out the A position value. This will be our starting point, so you want the framing to be the same as your original clip. Now, by default, this effect moves your clip from point A to point B. So let's use the point B controls to set the final framing of our clip. This is what our effect looks like now, but you can make it look even better. First, use the duration slider to adjust the speed of this effect. Next, open the takeoff drop down menu and adjust the timing at the start of this effect. You can make it linear, pop back for a few frames at the start, make the effect ease in, Ease in even slower with Ease in squared option and much more. For landing type, you have even more options. You can ease out this effect, ease it out even slower with the Expo option. You can make the landing elastic, make it thud and many more. Normally, when I use this effect for my tutorial videos, I use the Ease squared option for the takeoff and Expo for landing. Here's what the effect looks like with the transform tool. And here's the same clip using Add Motion. Next, if you want to zoom out and go back to your original framing, it's super easy to do. Just move your playhead to where you want to zoom out of your clip and ripple trim the end of the adjustment layer to your playhead. Hold down the Option key and drag your adjustment layer to make a copy of it. Snap the second adjustment layer to your playhead. Go back to the Video Inspector and to reverse the movement, select B to A. Add the included motion blur effect to your adjustment layers and render out your clip for this fake camera zoom effect. This alone makes a plugin worth the money, but there's more. Besides the add motion effect we just seen, this plugin also comes with pop and swing effects. These work great for animating graphics in your videos. Just add an adjustment layer above your graphic, add the effect to it, and adjust the parameters. With just a few simple steps, you have this cool animation. If we go back to the Titles and Generators browser, this plugin also comes with three different text presets. Add one of these presets to your timeline, replace the text, and adjust the available parameters for a cool title effect like this, or this, or even this. Like I said at the start of this video, the Add Motion plugin is by far the best plugin I have for Final Cut Pro. I use this in every single video I make. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's not even an affiliate link. For a product like this, I have no problems promoting it for free. I like it that much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back here next week. When you add titles to your project for text color, you get two options. You can either choose a solid color or a gradient. That's boring. In this video, we'll take a look at a few different ways you can bring your text to life in Final Cut Pro. First, let's take a look at animating text color in your video. When you add a title to your project, in the Text Inspector, you can pick the color of your text, 
but there's no keyframing option here, so you can't animate it. If you want to have your text change color throughout the clip, there is a way to do it. In the text inspector, change your text color back to white and press Command 5 to open the effects browser. Select the color category, grab the colorize effect and drag and drop it onto your title clip. Go back to the video inspector, click on the remap white to color box and select your starting color. Bring the intensity slider all the way up to 100% for a true color. Doing it this way gives you an option to keyframe this parameter. With your playhead at the start of the title clip, add a keyframe here. Move your playhead about 20 frames ahead and select a different color. For this example, let's go through all the colors in this row. So let's pick orange next. Move ahead about 20 more frames and pick the next color. Since this parameter is keyframed, anytime you change it, a new keyframe is added. Go through your title clip and pick the next color about every 20 frames. Come back around to red when you're all the way through. Render out your clip and this is our result. Next, let's take a look at how to add some texture to a normal 2D title. Add a title to your project, replace the text, select a heavy font to make the texture visible and make it nice and big. I want the text for this example to have a concrete texture, so I'll select the gray color for my text. Go up to your Titles and Generators browser, and from the Generators drop-down menu, select the Textures category. Grab the Stone Texture Generator and add it above your title clip. In the Generators Inspector, change the type to Concrete 2. Go back to the Video Inspector and change the Blend Mode of the Generator clip to Overlay. To only have this texture affect our text, we need to add a mask. Select the Masks category and add an image mask to your top clip. Click on the Mask Source button, select your title clip, and click Apply Clip. Instead of having a plain color for our text, we now have this cool concrete texture. And as always, I save the best for last. But before we take a look at it, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. This is a subscription service that's a must-have for any type of content creator. For one low monthly fee, you get unlimited access to almost 60 million royalty-free digital assets. You get unlimited downloads of stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and so much more. And new items are added every single week. You can try Envato Elements risk-free for seven days, and if you don't love it, simply cancel your subscription before your trial expires and you won't be charged a single penny. For every person that signs up for Envato Elements through the link in the video description, a small percentage of that goes directly to supporting my channel for more free tutorials like this one. So try it out, you have nothing to lose, and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. Now back to Final Cut Pro. If you want your title to really stand out in your project, placing a video clip inside your text is a really cool option. Press Ctrl T to add your default title to your timeline, replace the text, select your font and make it nice and big. Once again, try using a heavy font for this. Next, select a video clip or an animation to place inside your text. I'm using this cool abstract lightning clip downloaded from Envato Elements. Place this clip directly under your title clip. Use the Transform tool to resize and reposition this clip if necessary. Select your title clip and head up to the Video Inspector. From the Blend Mode drop-down menu, select Stencil Alpha. This places your video inside the letters of your title with a black background. Once again, use the Transform tool in the video clip to adjust your framing if needed. To make the black background transparent, command click the title clip in your video clip and combine them into a compound clip with the keyboard shortcut Option G. Now, instead of a plain boring color for your clip, you have this cool automated background inside your letters. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, check out the rest of my channel for over 300 free Final Cut Pro tutorials like this one. New videos uploaded every single week, so please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Today, we'll learn how to add the double exposure effect to your videos in Final Cut Pro. We'll take a look at three different examples, each one getting progressively harder. Let's start with the easiest one. 
what you need for this effect is a shot of a dark subject silhouetted against a light background. All the black in your clip will be completely transparent, everything that's white will be opaque, and all the colors and shades in between will be semi-transparent. This first clip will only need a few minor adjustments to blow out the background and darken our subject. Add a color wheels correction. Grab the highlights exposure control and drag it all the way up until the background is completely white. If your pointer gets all the way to the top of the wheel but the background isn't completely white, you can just keep dragging up until it's completely blown out. Next, grab the shadows control and bring it all the way down until your subject is nice and dark. Adjust the mid-tone exposure to show more or less detail around the edges. Remember, anything that's not black or white will be semi-transparent. Next, grab the second clip you want to use for this effect and layer it directly above your first clip. This is the easy part. To blend these two clips into a double exposure, select the top clip and in the video inspector, from the blend mode drop down menu, select screen. This blend mode makes your second clip visible through the silhouette for this cool double exposure effect. Our next clip is a bit trickier. Because a subject in our clip is wearing a light shirt, it would be very hard to blow out the background without blowing out our subject with a color correction. In cases like this, using the Luma keyer would be a better choice. Press Command 5 to open the effects browser, and from the key in category, select the Luma keyer. Add this effect to your clip. In the video inspector, switch to matte view and drag the black point all the way to the right until your subject is almost completely black. Grab the white point and drag it left until the background is completely white. Play around with these controls until you have just a little bit of detail left in the subject, so just a bit of gray, which will be semi-transparent. Add your second clip above your timeline and in the video inspector, change in blend mode to screen. If you want to leave a little bit of detail in the sky of the original clip, select it and in the inspector, switch back to composite view in your Luma keyer tools. Personally, I think plain white background looks much better, so I'll go back to the map view. Whichever option you have selected is what your final export will look like. Here's my result. Before we move on to our last example, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Whether you need a stock clip to use as part of your double exposure effect, royalty-free music or sound effects to make your video more engaging, or a unique title to make your project stand out, Envato Elements has what you're looking for and more. For one low monthly fee, you get unlimited access to almost 60 million digital assets, including stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, web templates, still images, and so much more. And with new items added every week, their library just keeps growing. So whether you make videos for a living or posting videos online is just a hobby, you need to check out Envato Elements. You can try it risk-free for seven days, and if you don't love it, simply cancel your subscription before your trial expires and you won't be charged a single penny. Trust me, a subscription to Envato Elements will help you make better videos. Now, back to Final Cut Pro. In our last example, the luminance levels of our subject and the background are very similar, so it would be nearly impossible to separate them by adjusting exposure or by using the Luma gear. What we can do, though, is isolate specific colors and overexpose them for a white background. Go to the color inspector and add a hue saturation curves correction. Scroll down to the hue versus luma curves, select the eyedropper tool, and first use it to sample a sky in our clip. Grab the middle control point and drag it all the way up to blow out the sky in this clip. Next, use the eyedropper tool to sample the color of the ocean in this clip. In the hue versus luma curves, you get a line that represents this color. Click on the curve line to add another control point and drag it all the way up. Adjust these control points until you blow out as much of the background as possible. To take care of the rest, let's add a color wheels correction and bring up the highlights exposure control all the way up. Adjust the mid-tones and shadows until you get a nice silhouette of the subject while retaining a little bit of detail. Add your second clip on top of this one and change the blend mode to screen for this cool double exposure effect. If you found this video helpful or learned something new from it, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you back here next week. 
I'm getting close to about 350 videos on this channel. Every single one was edited in Final Cut Pro, and that's just this channel alone. So needless to say, I use Final Cut Pro quite a bit. Along the way, I picked up a few tricks to help me edit more efficiently, and today I'm going to share my top 10 tips for editing video in Final Cut Pro. Before you even import your media into Final Cut Pro, take a couple of minutes to organize it into folders. For example, I have a folder template with separate folders for A-roll, B-roll, screen recordings, music, and more. For each project, I make a copy of this folder, rename it, and transfer the media from my memory cards into the appropriate locations in this folder as soon as I finish filming. There's a couple of advantages to this. One, when you're ready to edit your video, all your media is in the same place, so you don't have to search for memory cards or try to figure out where your assets are. And two, when you import this folder into Final Cut Pro, you have the option to add keywords from folders. This makes each folder into a keyword collection, so you know exactly where everything is when you need it. After importing your media into Final Cut Pro, before making your first cut, go through and review your footage. If you like a clip and want to make sure it makes it into your project, you can mark it as a favorite by pressing F on your keyboard. On the other hand, if you have a clip you know you're not going to use, you can reject it by pressing delete. This doesn't delete the clip, it just marks it as rejected and hides it from your media browser. If you press Ctrl+C c to show all your clips, the clips you rejected show up with a red line at the top. Press Ctrl h to hide these rejected clips and declutter your media browser. You can also favorite and reject only parts of clips. Skim your clip and use the I and O keys to set a start and an end point. With your range selected, press F to favorite this part of the clip. Select another range in the same clip and mark it as a favorite again. Now if we press Ctrl F to show only favorites, the two parts you selected as favorites show up as individual clips. This can also be used to split long takes into smaller clips. Press Ctrl H to go to the hide rejected view in your media browser. To split up one long clip into smaller parts, skim your clip and with the skimmer where you want to split your clip, press I on your keyboard to set the end point. Move your skimmer one frame ahead with the right arrow key and press O to set the out point. Now, if you press delete to reject the single frame you selected, your long clip gets split into two shorter segments. I find this quite a bit easier to work with. When it comes to third-party plugins for Final Cut Pro, there's a ton out there. Some are good and some not so much. If you download and use third-party plugins, which you should, especially if they cost you money, you want quality plugins that deliver what they promise. I feel like right now is a perfect time to talk about the sponsor of this video, Motion VFX. When it comes to quality Final Cut Pro plugins, no one even compares to Motion VFX. They have a ton of professional plugins for Final Cut Pro that look amazing, are very easy to use, and most important of all, deliver on their promise. Let me show you a few of my favorites. Let's take transitions for example. Final Cut Pro has quite a few built in, but honestly, most of them are a little cheesy. If you want your videos to look professional, you need something simple, but at the same time, something that looks good. The M Transitions Fade Pack is perfect for this. With this plugin, you get 51 cinematic shading effect transitions that look both professional and amazing. And here's how easy they are to use. Skim over any of the presets to preview what they look like. And once you find the one you like, just drag and drop it over your clip. Let's drop a few different ones onto our timeline and play them back to see what they look like. Each one of these also comes with a ton of parameters you can customize to blend it perfectly into your video. A couple other plugins from Motion VFX I use quite a bit are MTitle Cinematic, MTuber 3, MTitle Kinetic, and when the built-in object tracker in Final Cut Pro just doesn't cut it, I love using the much more robust MTracker 3D. I'll have a few more examples of some of these plugins later on in this video. When using one of the built-in titles or a third-party title in your project, you often need to change the font, size, color, or any of the other parameters in the text inspector. If you want to keep your videos on brand and keep consistency throughout your project, you often apply the same adjustments to your text. Instead of doing it manually every time, you can save these as a text style. After all your adjustments have been applied in the text inspector, open this drop-down menu up here and select Save All Format and Appearance Attributes. 
give your preset a name and click save. Next time you need to form out a title this way, instead of adjusting all the parameters manually, just open the textile drop down menu in the text inspector and select your saved preset. With just a couple of clicks, your title is formatted just the way you like it. This is an excellent way of keeping consistency across all your projects. If you make videos for YouTube, audience retention is critical. If people get bored while watching your videos, even if it's just for a split second, they just move on. To keep people watching, you must constantly entertain or feed them information. This means you need to cut your darlings and cut out every part of the video that isn't absolutely necessary. What I see many YouTubers constantly doing, and I'm as guilty of this as the next guy, is reminding people to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and so on. And it has been proven that it does actually help with audience engagement, but at the end of the day, we're just wasting everybody's time. A better way of reminding someone to subscribe to your channel is a subtle graphic that pops on screen at the same time as you're feeding them useful information. MTuber 3 from Motion VFX is one of the better plugins for this. Select the call to action you want to remind your audience of and drop it onto your timeline. The one or two seconds you just cut out could be the difference between someone staying on your video or moving on. While on the topic of keeping videos short and to the point, when you have something important to say and you really need it to sync in with your audience, add some large pop-on text as you speak. You can just use a basic title, make it nice and big, and time it to the text in your speech. Or to make things easier, you could use a plugin that's designed for this. The one I love is MTitle Kinetic from Motion VFX. This plugin comes with 60 beautiful presets designed for this exact purpose. Just add it to your timeline, select the textile preset you made earlier, and adjust the timing to match your speech. Add some large pop-on text as you speak. When color correcting or grading your footage, having true colors is important, but having proper skin tones is even more important. The last thing you want is people in your clips having green or purple skin, Final Cut Pro has an excellent tool for this called the Vector Scope. Press Ctrl Command 1 to hide your media browser and Command 7 to show video scopes. Click on the Scopes button in the top right and select Vector Scope. Click on the same button again and at the bottom select Show Skin Tone Indicator. In your Vector Scope, you'll see the Skin Tone line right here. This is where your skin tones should fall. Use the Crop tool to isolate your subject's skin in the viewer window. Add a color wheels adjustment and adjust your midtones until a trace in your vector scope falls on this line. Reset your crop tool for perfect skin tones. And this works on all shades and colors of skin. While on the topic of color correction, if your camera's white balance was off during filming, there's also a really easy way to fix that. Select your clip in the timeline and under the viewer window, click on the color balance button and select balance color. Head up to the video inspector and from the method drop down menu, select white balance. Use the eyedropper tool to select an area in your clip that should be white. And just like that, your whites are back to being white. When you edit video in Final Cut Pro, by default, anytime you add a title, effect, or anything else to any clips in your timeline, Final Cut Pro renders your clip in the background for smoother playback. If you edit fairly simple projects, especially on any of the M1 Macs, you don't need to do this. All this will do is slow down your machine while rendering and make your library huge. To turn this off, press Command Comma to open the Preferences window, and in the Playback tab, deselect Background Rendering. Now, if you are playing back your project and start dropping frames, you can selectively render parts of your project for smoother playback. Select one or more clips in your timeline and press Ctrl R to render out just the selected clips. Your machine will run more efficiently and the size of your Final Cut Pro library will be much smaller. If you own one of the newer iPads and an Apple Pencil, using Sidecar with Final Cut Pro can be a great tool. You can use an iPad as a secondary display and have your media browser, your viewer window, or even your timeline on there. But what I love most about using an iPad with Final Cut Pro is if you need to do some precision work like rotoscoping. With your iPad connected, click on the Displays button in the top right corner and display your viewer window on your iPad. Add a draw mask to your clip 
and instead of using a mouse or a trackpad to add control points, use your Apple Pencil. Doing it this way is faster, more accurate, and feels right. You can take a tedious task like masking your clip and do it more naturally and efficiently on an iPad. Try it out, you won't regret it. I hope you found at least one of these tips helpful. I know I sure did. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Today, you're going to learn how to make a cool look and still image with movement, also known as a cinemagraph, in Final Cut Pro. This is a two part video, and in the second part, you'll learn how to export the cinemagraph you just made as a GIF file. If you came here just to learn how to make a GIF in Final Cut Pro, you can skip to this part right here. Let's get started. First, let's make a cinemagraph from a video clip. For this, you'll need a tripod shot where your camera doesn't move at all. Your video clip needs a little bit of small, subtle movement in it, separate from the subject you want to freeze. Smaller movement and good separation from your subject will make this nice and easy. Select your video clip in your timeline, and first, make a copy of it by holding down the Option key and dragging straight up. Place your playhead on the frame where you want to freeze your subject, and press Option F to make a freeze frame clip of your selected frame. In my case, since my subject has constant movement in the same direction, I had to freeze the very first frame. Ripple trim your freeze frame clip to the same length as your video clip and delete the remaining video. Press Command 5 to open the effects browser, select the masks category, and add a draw mask to your top clip. In the video inspector, change the shape type to B spline for nice soft curves, zoom in on your viewer window, and start adding control points to outline your subject. Since the subject in our clip is moving down, we only want to outline the top side. Because we're using the B-spline shape type, we have nice soft curves between our control points. If you need to make a sharp corner, right click on the control point and change it to linear. Keep adding control points to outline the top side of your subject. Take your time and be as accurate as possible here. Once you're done, zoom back out on your viewer window and add control points around the outside of your image to include the entire bottom half inside the mask. Adjust the feather slider to smooth out any rough edges around your mask. Render out your clip for this cool looking cinemagraph. For our next example, let's use a still image and add some movement to it to bring it to life. In my example, I'm going to add some steam coming off this pizza. Before we do, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. Envato Elements is an all-in-one subscription service that has everything you need as a filmmaker. For one low monthly fee, you get unlimited access to stock video, royalty-free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, fonts, and so much more. You get unlimited downloads, and everything is covered by one simple license, so you never have to worry about copyright strikes. Let's head over to Envato Elements right now and see if we can find a Steam overlay to use for our next example. I'll select Stock Video, filter down to just Motion Graphics, and search for Steam. Hover over any of these clips for a quick preview. This one here looks exactly like what I need, so I'll just click the Download button, license a clip to my project, and start my download. It's that simple. And if you're not sure whether it's right for you, you can try it absolutely free for 7 days. Try it out, you won't regret it. Now, back to Final Cut Pro. First, let's make our still image fill out the entire video frame. Select the clip in your timeline, head up to the video inspector, and change the spatial conform type to fill. Next, import your steam overlay clip, and add it above the pizza clip in your timeline. Ripple trim this clip to the same length as your still image. Having a black background in this clip makes it very easy to remove. Just select the stock clip in your timeline, go to the video inspector, and from the blend mode drop down menu, select screen. Use the transform tool to resize and place the steam in the right spot. To better blend it in with the bottom clip, let's bring down the opacity of this clip to around 30%. And to hide the hard line at the bottom from the effects browser, add a shape mask and feather out the bottom edge. With just a couple easy steps, we turn this boring still image into a cool cinemagraph. Next, let's take the cinemagraph we just made and export it as a GIF file. And this doesn't just apply to cinemagraphs. You can do this with any video clip in your timeline. But you do need Apple's compressor app for this. First, press Command, comma to open the Final Cut Pro Preferences window. 
and select the Destinations tab. On the left hand side, click Add Destination and drag over the compressor setting icon into your sidebar. In the pop-up window, scroll down to the Motion Graphics folder and select either the Animated Image Large or Small preset. Click OK and close the Preferences window. If you only have the Cinemagraph clip in your timeline, you can go ahead and hit the Share button in the top right corner. But if like me, you have other clips in your timeline, but you only want to export the Cinemagraph, there's one extra step. Use a keyboard shortcut R to switch to the Range tool and click and drag out a range in your primary timeline you want to export. Everything above it will also be included. My example is just over 10 seconds long. Hit the Share button and select Animated Image as your export preset. As you can see down here, our exported file will be just over 10 seconds long, just like the range we selected. Give it a name and select the Save Destination to export your Cinemagraph as a tiny GIF file you can easily share online. If you found this video helpful and you haven't yet, check out the rest of my channel for more Final Cut Pro tutorials just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next week. Today, we're going to learn how to make the school sketch to video transition in Final Cut Pro. All this can be done using the tools included with Final Cut Pro with no need to download or install any plugins. Before we start, I just want to take a few seconds to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Envato Elements. I've been using Envato Elements pretty much from the day I started this channel, and basically every video on this channel has something downloaded from their website. I use Envato Elements for background music for my videos, sound effects, stock footage for my demos or b-roll, still images for my thumbnails, video templates for my custom titles, and so much more. And the best part is everything is included for one low monthly price. You get unlimited downloads, and with their one simple commercial license, you can use any of their assets with confidence on your work or personal projects. Even if you cancel your subscription, anything you published while your subscription was active is still covered. You can try it absolutely free for 7 days, and after that, it's just over $33 per month. What I recommend though, is getting their annual subscription for over 50% off, so you only end up paying $16.50 a month. Click the link in the video description, sign up for the free trial, and see how Envato Elements can help you make better videos. To achieve this effect, you'll need a video clip you want to transition and a top-down shot of a notebook or even just a blank piece of paper. First thing we'll do is grab a freeze frame from a video clip and turn it into a sketch. Grab your video clip and drop it down into your timeline. Move your playhead to the start of this clip, make sure the clip is selected and press Option F to make a freeze frame clip. Select the freeze frame clip, hold down the Option key and drag straight down to make a copy of this clip. We'll use this later on for frame and reference. Press Command 5 to open the effects browser, select the Comic Looks category, and add the Comic Basic effect to your top freeze frame clip. In the Video Inspector, change the style to black and white, and adjust the available parameters to make your clip look like a sketch. Go back to your Media Browser, grab your Notebook clip, and drag it down into your timeline, placing it between the two freeze frame clips. Resize this clip to fit your frame if needed. Select your top clip and use the transform tool to roughly fit your sketch on the blank page. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get it fairly close. To make the sketch fit better on our page, we'll use a shape mask. Go back to your effects browser, select the masks category and add a shape mask to your top clip. Resize and rotate this mask to line up with the page in your bottom image and feather out the edges to blend it in. To remove the white background from your sketch clip, in the Video Inspector, change the blend mode of this clip to Multiply. Also, in my example, part of the pencil in the still image is covered up by the sketch. To bring this to the top layer, select the image clip, hold down the Option key and drag up to make a copy of it. Add a draw mask to this clip, zoom in on your viewer window, and add control points to outline the pencil. Click on the first control point to close your mask. Command click all your clips except for the bottom reference clip and combine them into a compound clip with a keyboard shortcut Option G. Next, let's transition this clip into a video clip. Place your playhead at the end of your compound clip 
and go back about 5 frames. Press M to add a marker here. Go back another 10 to 15 frames. Select the transform tool and add a keyframe. Move your playhead back to the marker. Turn down the opacity of your top clip until you can see the reference clip underneath and use the transform tool to line up your sketch clip with the reference clip under it. Once lined up, right click on each control point in the viewer window and change the movement type for each of them from smooth to linear. Bring the opacity of your top clip back up to 100%. Here's what we have so far. The last thing we need to do is smooth out the hard cut between our two clips. For this, we'll use one of Final Cut Pro's built-in transitions. But before we do, our compound clip needs a little bit of extra media at the end so we can keep the timing of our keyframes. Double click on the compound clip to open it in a separate timeline and ripple trim each clip out by a few seconds. This will give us enough media for a transition. Press the back arrow under the viewer window to go back to your project. Press Ctrl Command 5 to open the transitions browser. Select the lights category and drag and drop the bloom transition between your two clips. Ripple trim this transition clip until it's about 10 frames long. Render out your timeline for this cool effect. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and share it with someone else who might like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.